Island back up to the top mark for a second time. Then the downwind run to Shark Island, and then a uh, basically what will be a, a fairly tight run down to the finish line near Fort Denison, the Opera House, and towards the Harbour Bridge. So, be a great spectacle, and uh, it'll be good good for images. And uh, as we see now, we've got um, the smaller Wild Oats 10, the 66 foot rock, a Pew Canning Keel uh, boat, great little boat but uh, that'll be no match for the uh, 100 footers of Wild Oats 11 from the same stable and uh, Blackjack and what's interesting Pete is you know we know that when uh, both Blackjack and Wild Oats 11 started they were uh, near sister ships and uh, but since then it's been uh, particularly in the Wild Oats 11 huge modifications done over the years to keep that boat current and uh, and uh, all the su success that it's had. Just watching the big wild oats now powering away coming back towards us and the starting line and this is going to be very exciting between these two big boats Blackjack and Wild Oats 11 and the big thing is there's a huge spectator fleet out at uh, it's not as big as Sydney Hobart race day, of course, but it's, uh, there's a lot of people out and on, a, on a glorious day as we're just watching Wild Oats 11 power back down towards Double Bay. And they're an amazing boat, amazing speeds that they do. And uh, it's all set up. I mean, Blackjack and Wild Oats have gone hammer and tong in the last few months, firstly at Hamilton Island, where Wild Oats narrowly took the line on as um, spoils. But uh, over just last weekend in the short offshore regatta off Sydney, Wild Oats was first home on the Saturday and the roles were reversed on the Sunday with Blackjack getting home by a couple of minutes in the, in the short offshore race off Sydney Heads. And if we look at, um, and just talk for a second about the uh, strengths and weaknesses of each boat, uh, Blackjack, I understand and we can see from the results, is configured for the lighter air and uh, Wild Oats 11 for more pressure, and I think we're right at that crossover zone with the pressure we got at the start. Well, John, what do you think? Have we got about 12 knots there with 15 by the end yeah, of the day? Maybe yeah. more, do you think? Yeah, no, I'd say 10 to 10 to 12, maybe a fraction more in the gus. And uh, we like trying to... Uh, I just looked at that uh, wild oats go down there. It's like trying to drive a semi-trailer in a go-kart track, I would imagine. Yeah, they've got to be on their game, no doubt about that. And Mark Richards at the helm of... Um, Wild Oats and Mark Bradford at the helm of Black Jacket, two of the best in the business. Yeah, no, no I'm, I would imagine neither will give each, the other an inch at the start here. Just watching Wild Oats 11 bearing away down the starting line. That's uh, Clark Island in the background. And Warwick, we've got, uh, how long are we going on? How are we going for time there? Uh, sorry, I've already flicked through the sequence. We'll have it on the VHF soon but uh yeah we haven't had the warning signal go up but we're, we're not not far away um i think in the next two minutes we should have the warning signal which will be five minutes to the start yeah, I... uh, blackjack hasn't got the head still up yet and i can see uh, wild oats 11 has got the J1 up plenty of pressure there you can see wild oats 11 well healed as she's just doing a practice run off the line on starboard tack plenty of wind and it's uh, as the day goes on I think the breeze is going to build quite considerably yeah we've got uh, Bo Jest just coming down to the line getting ready uh, for their start and black blackjacks just starting to put their heads up now that's uh, Bo uh, Jest Bo with a dragon on the sail the big red dragon on the mainsail the, the gold insignia on the headsail and we're just seeing Wild Oats, she's done her practice time start and she's just bearing away now to come down back towards the committee boat. And uh, that's Bo Jess just going across the starting line and running back towards uh, Clark Island. Yeah, boat and 80 footer, owned by Carl Kwok from uh, Hong Kong. And there's the smaller Wild Oats doing a cant to windward as they come up to the starting line. Young crew aboard Wild Oats at 10. We'll talk more about them as the race goes on. We're getting close to a, a warning signal. And 
There's three of the four contestants. Wild Oats, 10, the smaller one going in the foreground, going across the line, Bo Jest in the background, and then just behind Wild Oats, just pulled a headsail up, is Black Jack. Yeah, Black Jack with their J1 up. And Black Jack named... Yeah, less than one minute, we've just heard on the VHF. Just going back to Blackjack, uh, named in honour of Sir Jack Brabham, Australian three-time Formula One world champion and, uh, and an engineer. OK, we're standing by for the warning signal, which is five minutes to go. Here's Blackjack bearing away, and they will be engaging with Wild Oats 11 at some stage. Look at the power of these boats. She's cracking away there at about 15, 18 knots without even trying. Extraordinary. Pressure, loads, extraordinary on these boats. And uh, here they come to engage. Five, four, three, two, one, gun. Warning signal, five minutes to a start. Five minutes to a start. Wild Oats 10, young crew on board. No, John. Yeah. Great backdrop there of Sydney on a, on a cloudless summer's day. Wild Oats 10 just coming back up to the starting line. And uh, not on camera at the moment. The two big boats are engaged already. And we've got about um, 4.20 to go. And it's cat and mouse already between the, the 200 footers. Yeah, we haven't got it on screen there now. Are, there we go. are now. This, this is a match race, mate. No mistake about it. This is match racing in 100 footers. This is going to be awesome. And neither uh, helmsman is going to give anything away in the afterguard. And here we go. Four minutes. Uh, Blackjack rolling into attack to uh, chase, chase the oats. <coughs> the hunted and the hunter. They're right deep in Double Bay off uh, Point Piper. They're well back from the, the uh, starting line, but they've still got about three minutes 50 to go. And here they go. And Peter, we've got some really experienced match races from the America's Cup in both afterguards on, uh, on these boats. And, and this, this will be, you know, for glory, who can win the start here for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a long, longish beat up towards Manly, but uh, if you can get first rights off the starting line, you can control the race. And these boats are, are very, very similar in speed. Yep, here yeah. they go, classic. Wild Oats rolls into attack. Blackjack jibes, comes back up, trying to uh, get the hook. They won't worry about these other two boats because they know that uh, they've got the speed, even if they're uh, cross time-wise across the starting line is compromised they just got each, each of these boats going to want controlling uh, to control the other obviously he goes blackjack he's going to try and hook inside here I don't think he can do that here comes Wild Oats back on starboard wind on the right hand side he has all the rights here Wild Oats blackjack driving away and we've got to a start we've got uh, two two and a half minutes to go to a start And they're still going at it. Wild Oats going back again to have another go at Blackjack. It'll be time on distance now into this start line. It's who wriggles away first and can time his start, time back to the start line, who could gain the advantage here. But as Warwick was saying, we've got Brad Butterworth, one of New Zealand's and the world's top sailors aboard Blackjack. Ian Murray aboard uh, Wild Oats. They'd be in both helmsman's ears, just giving them some input. But at the end of the day, the helmsman's got to get the boat around. He's got to track the boat. He's got to make sure it's safe, but make sure that he can try and gain the advantage. Now, they're probably setting up now to come into this line. I doubt whether we'll see any more right. dial-ups. There's Blackjack going yeah. up head to win. 140, Peter. That's uh, the smaller Wild Oats in the foreground. You'll see behind him, Bo Jess coming down on port. Blackjack's set up now. And then Wild Oats, as we look at it, is the left-hand most boat with the white Audi rings on the mainsail. So it looks like Blackjack is advanced on, on Wild Oats, slightly to leeward, and it's time in now to the starting line. And we've got about 
to the start. We've got uh, one minute, one minute, and minute eight. eight seconds. Okay, they're on final approach now. There's the smaller Wild Oats making things difficult. She's canting a keel so that she's topping over to windward and slowing down. One minute, one minute to go. Here they go. Wild Oats is at full pace. Blackjack not quite at full pace yet. I think Wild Oats... The Wild Oats is, hand is, is really burning time. Um, Blackjack just coming away more, looking for the pin. But there's plenty of spectator boats down there right on, that, on the line of the pin. The uh, Maritime want to get that under control a bit better. Boat just right off our port side here. She's going like to be she's going to be over the line. She's going to be above the line. And I yep. think Wild Oats will lock her out. Yes, yep. Boat just got a bail at the moment. They've all slowed up. You can see they're... Yeah, they're locked out, Pete. They're Candy gone. To Winwood, yep, I they're think so. Gone. It looks like Blackjack 15. to me. Blackjack, he can put the bow down and go hard. There's the smaller Wild Oats just above him and here comes the bigger Wild Oats. Can he get in there, the big Wild Oats? How long we got, Warwick? Uh, five seconds. Okay, four, it's going to be clear. Three, two, one. For me, that's a clear start, Pete. Start, clear start. Yeah, clear start from the race officer, Dennis Thompson. Pretty even. Yep. Pretty even. Uh, Bo just, just slipped in there. And the thing is, Blackjack needs to get the hammer down because they're, they're going to run out. It's a short runway to Bradley's head. And when they tack, they'll have no rights, Pete. OK, uh, John Winning, give us your appraisal here. This is classic 18-footer stuff. First yeah. to Bradley's. Well, the, the only advantage I can see for Blackjack here is that they might actually clear Bradley's. There's a fair bit of east in this. And uh, it might get him out of jail. But, um, yeah, that, yeah, so that. if he gets through Bradley's, but he's still, whatever, he's got to get around him to come off the shore. So... Uh, while Oates is probably holding the holding the aces, I guess, um, and, unless he can foot out, but I, they're very similar in speed. It'll be hard to see him getting enough distance to be able to cross him. You can see Blackjack's mainsail is just inverting slightly. Wild Oates is not. He's getting some gauge off Blackjack here. So as we look at Blackjack on the right of screen, then the bigger Wild Oates, then the smaller Wild Oates, and then Bo Jest. But at the moment, I would give this to Wild Oats 11. She seems to be standing yeah. off uh, Blackjack quite nicely. Her sails look just a little bit better trim than Blackjack. Blackjack's is wasting a little bit of mainsail. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to clear Bradley's, but he's going to have to go a fair way um, be, be, before he can uh, well, the thing before is, he can tack. Yeah, and I think and the I, thing is, guys. I mean, as you're alluding to, Peter, I think. Uh, Maybe slightly overpowered at times, um, but can Blackjack tack and duck the oats? So is this a case of can they call water on the oats? Or uh, uh, yeah. I, I think he's too far to call water. Yeah, yeah. I think what's yeah. happened, Warwick, is that as you said, that you look at Black uh, Wild Oats 11 mainsails. It looks great. It hasn't even backwinded once. Whereas Blackjack is struggling down there and it's get, enabling Wild Oats 11 to get some gauge off Blackjack. So he's opening it, up to windward or and it's, to the it's right hand of the, the screen as we look at it. This Manly Ferry might smarten things up a little too, but it is, it's it's dead, almost dead low tide, but I, I think they've still got enough off that shore. They're going to clear the navigation mark over there, the clearance mark. Yep, and we're, up, we're on the, uh, the tracker there right now. And uh, you can see the Bo Jess is hanging in off the hip of Wild Oats 11 amazingly well. He's done a good job there, Bo Jess. Gavin Brady the, at the helm of Carl Quark's charge. It, it's pretty even, though, at the moment. Uh, Blackjack has settled down. His mainsail is uh, working, seems to be working a lot better at the moment. As a, it's all happening here. There's spectator boats everywhere. And, almost in screen at the moment you'll see the manly ferry charging in an opposite direction to the fleet and the uh, the manly bound ferries pulled up at the near the clearance mate for all of okay there's the ferry them. now we're talking about he's uh city bound the yachts are manly bound and the manly bound ferries put a uh, virtually stand still off bradley's there good on them yeah that's what we like to see a bit of common sense on the harbour so as you said, 
Woody, uh, a fair bit of eastern it, but you know what we come out and do every week, the 80s, they don't uh, sail as high to the wind as what these maxes will. If so, our, our moment of truth comes a lot sooner, but uh, I, I don't think either boat's got any speed on the other, so he's going to struggle to get enough to get a crossing, I would think. Yeah. And so, uh, back on the tracker, we've got Blackjack heading into Taylor's Bay. They will have to initiate attack very shortly. And that will be the moment of truth. Yeah. I, I doubt whether he can cross from there, Blackjack. I think he's going to have to take the stern of, uh, of Wild Oats 11. He's going to punch right into the shore and come out on high ports, but I, I still don't think he's got enough yeah. runway to and clear. If, if he misses Wild, Oats, Wild 11. Oats 11, he won't get in Bojest either. No. Bojest done a good job. He's, he's hung up to windward. So that's Wild Oats to the right of screen. Blackjack tacking there he now. Goes now. Yeah. And Wild Oats will be ahead here, there's no doubt about that, because he'll have starboard tack rights. And and here he comes and he'll... No, Wild Oats 11 is clear ahead. Yeah, he's starting to come away now. Yep. Remember the tide is uh, is coming in. There's Blackjack, he's taken he the dip now. If he decides to take uh, Bojest on or not. Yeah, I think point, he is. Woody. He's That's going to take Bojest on for sure. Will he clear? He's going to be close. Only just. He'll be going back, I think. Doesn't look as though he will clear from the overhead shot. Just That's very tight. Very tight indeed. Yep. Bojest, are they putting the helm down at all? No. no so think... that's all clear. Yep. Good cross. That's a t it's a matter of inches on these boats, as you can see there. It was looked close and he, he backed himself. So, okay, we've got Wild Oats 11 standing into Chowder Bay, Clifton Gardens. Tailing him is Bo Jest. And then standing out into midstream now on, on Port Tack is Black Jack. I think he's going to be setting up to tack shortly and go back. And there he goes, Black Jack. He's going to tack. So all the three leaders are on starboard tack, standing in towards George's head. And the smaller Wild Oats is, is as you'd expect, well behind now. He's also on starboard tack. So that's Blackjack, he's, he's just tacked. Breeze is, um, is steady, hasn't built that much, and as John was saying, it's, it's probably east-northeast here, John. Yeah, there's certainly plenty of east, although they're not laying up too well just at the present uh, Blackjack, whether he's just got her a way to get some speed on, but he's, uh, he's almost aiming at them. So we'll see what we get out of here. I, I think I'd like to be where Wild Oats 11 is, go yeah. into the shore, tack and come out on high port. So, I think he will yeah. have extended here. Yeah, he's getting a lift and he, he should get that, uh, if there's any shades of north at all, at, uh, out of George's head. So wait and see. It's, he's coming round the bow of Bow Jest nicely yeah. and also uh, Blackjack. That's uh, Wild Oats in the distance. Blackjack left of screen and uh, right of screen is, um, is Blackjack. And you can see Wild Oats 11 beautifully lifting up on starboard tack. He's just waltzing around the bow of Bo Jest. And by the time he tacks, he'll wait for a little header in on George's head, tack and come out on port. He will have extended, I would think, on, uh, on Blackjack. Tied yeah. tied an effect there, John? Um... Well, he's out of the tide. It's only had an, an hour and a half of the turn, but the tide's tied. Yeah. You know, it's either with you and against you. And, um, but you, you generally sort of, you, you, you get that lift where it sucks around the point and then hopefully you lift off the point the other side there, so. Well, there's the tack. Wild Oats, his are. first tack after the start. He's on port. Blackjack on star, but there's not going to be that much in it, actually. What's happening here? We'll have a look. Is Blackjack, is it Wild Oats 11 across? That's they've, the thing. They've dialed up at him. It's only, it's only just across. Yeah, just across. That's all. Very tight. Very okay. tight. Boat just now on, on port as well. Two or three boat lengths behind. But Wild yeah. Oats 11 is going to tack on his bow. Okay, game on. Okay, Blackjack okay. will tack. 
Yeah, he bail out of there. So it's game right on here. And I tell you what, Bojess is hanging in here amazingly well. Yeah. I mean, they're giving away 20 feet. He's going to tack back also. Yeah. We're right on Bojess here. So what's the tactics now? Blackjack going out into midstream. Bojess tacked onto starboard to follow Wild Oats into George's head. A lot of spectator boats out here. There's a lot of wash. Not affecting the, the race boats, certainly affecting a lot of the spectator boats. Yep. So it looks like Blackjack might be setting up. Yeah, here, there he goes. Go. He won't want to let him go, but here comes Wild Oats again at him. Exactly. So all the rights are with Blackjack here because he's on starboard tack, wind on his right hand side. Wild Oats coming back on port tack. There's Wild Oats. So we middle of screen, Blackjack on starboard coming back. What's going to happen here? Blackjack yeah, puts no, the ball no, he's coming behind him. He's got him. Blackjack's yeah. in front because he's got the starboard tack rights. Mm, right. Okay, what's the tactics now, John? <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> presume he'll, he'll come out to the uh, to the right, and then he maybe he'll have the, the starboard rights if he's um. But, but looking to me, I, I would think uh, Blackjack might have just a. A little bit of uh, speed up his sleeve. Yeah, particular pace on him, yeah. Yeah, just, what do you, what do you just think, a fraction. Do you think yeah. there was any sort of eastern slant that they just got on the being to the right of Oates that it last time? Didn't look like look like he was getting a little bit of north. It looked like as everything was against him. But whether he was just dialed down uh, and then to, to give the illusion and then uh, sort of came up once they went about. I, I, I think they they only tossed because they couldn't cross him. I just. Uh, I can tell you, Oates is continuing over to the eastern shore now and then coming back. We've got a, a, a fairly large split now. Um, yeah. Oates, as you say, Oates has gone just... to midstream. Blackjack going up towards Middlehead and hanging in is Bo Jest, although I think Bo Jest is probably in the dirty air of uh, Blackjack yeah. there. I don't know how long he can stay there. Yeah, it's amazing that he is uh, happy to uh, just sit there and not tack back. So they obviously are favouring this shore. Our boat just sets up. Yeah, I think he's got to come out of there and get onto port pretty quickly. There he goes yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, also as Blackjack's tacking on, on Bow Jest. And uh, he has done very well, as Warwick mentioned yeah, earlier, Bow Jest. Here's the next cross coming up. <laughs> okay, so we're just to the west of uh, Sound Pigs. And they seem to be down a little here and. Uh, Oates is lifting nicely. I, I think he's going to take his turn. Yeah, yeah. Oates just out. Oh, no, we've got his shot. It looks like a little bit bow up and in slightly better pressure, Woody. Bo Jess. Yeah. These guys, what? Okay, yeah, Wild Oates, is, Wild Oates, I think, now has got the star attack right and will cross quite clearly ahead of Blackjack. I, I guess what that's telling us is. As the going right. to the east, yeah, he's favouring yeah. each time. Which, okay. when there's east in the breeze, that normally uh, is the case. Okay, yeah. we're just off screen at the moment. Blackjack's so tacked on the bow of of Wild Oats. There we go. He's tacked to leeward, slightly ahead now. Can Wild Oats live there? Now it's a speed race. They'll take a long starboard tack. Probably the advantage with Bo uh, Blackjack. He yeah. can put the bow down and accelerate. Wild Oats can't do that because he'll, if he does. He'll suck into to Blackjack. So this is a really good test here now of Wild Oats hang, able to hang in there. They're probably not far off a ley line to this mark that's up off Canoy Point. Exactly, Pete. I, I, I doubt whether they'll want to be going back to the right from where they are now, given this is the uh, longest tack towards the top. Yes, you have to say the, the advantage here, although the boats are very, very close, the advantage is slightly to Blackjack. As I mentioned before, he can put the bow down without really affecting anything, whereas Mark Richards and the team aboard Wild Oats 11, they've just got to hang in there and stay high. Yeah, well, well, if it's a starboard rounding, Oats can hold him out, if, if, to the ley line at least. Yeah, that's a good point, John. The Wild Oats is holding up high so that he can prevent... Um, I, I, Blackjack tacking. I, I tell you what, Peter, I, I think I'll spot the top mark. Yeah, yeah. And I think that Blackjack, we can see the, the bowman on Blackjack getting sorted to get that code zero sorted out. 
but um, I think that Blackjack might be on a lay and uh, Oates might have to come down into their track. I'm just not sure. It just depends how this next couple of minutes uh, plays out. Yeah, well, no, if Blackjack can lay it, he, he'll be in front. If he has to tack the go there, he'll have to wait for Wild Oats. This is a thrilling race, no uh, matter who's in front. Very close to these 200 footers, crewed by some of the world's best yachtsmen. Blackjack, owned by Peter Harburg out of Queensland. The Oatley family's Wild Oats 11, skippered by Mark Richards, who's been the skipper for all her wonderful successes. Eight Sydney Hobart line honours victories. Some handicap and record breaking runs in that uh, time as well. You can see the bow crews all working on their, their code zeros. And I think Blackjack is extending slightly. Yeah. It, Blackjack seems to me to have just maybe point one of a knot up yeah. his sleeve or just something. A, but he, every time I've looked at him, he just looks to be creeping away. Yeah, a tickle right. of speed. And we can see the, the weather mark up off uh, Canai Point. It's a fair way off. It's still another good uh, couple of... Uh, couple of k's there but there's nothing in it no breeze just went a little bit soft and just getting a little bit puffy as we get up towards and the breeze be coming up over that uh, big hill it's a hard job for wild oats to hang in there very hardy he'd, he'd be nearly starting to get dirty air yeah yeah i agree with you woody starting to come off the back of that sail yeah it's the and, and just out of shot, Bow just to the left of them is very bowed down. So, to me, the right is still the favoured side. Yes, I think we can see from this shot that Wild Oats is just slowly dropping in on the line of Blackjack. Any sort of little header will assist Blackjack. Cruz oh. changing gears, just changing the shape of the sails. I don't think they're 100% on lays. I've just got a, a, a visual, a clear visual on the top mark. Um, just depending on what they get here. A little bit squirrely breeze right now coming over that headland. It's a little bit squirrely, but I think even so that even if they're not on lay and they're definitely not, that Blackjack has now got the legs to be able to cross Wild Oats even on Port Tack. Absolutely. And again, that was probably a good setup by the team on Blackjack. They worked hard at those tactics to position themselves for the uh, run into this mark. And that probably setup occurred probably just after the start. They worked which side they have to be of Wild Oats coming in. It's a very tactical game when two boats are of almost equal speed. Unless they get a big shift from the right here, uh, in which case you'll probably lay it. So, uh, yeah, I think I'd rather be steering Blackjack. Just hit, Ooh, header. hit a bit of a brick wall there. Mm. Low speed and a header. Wild Oats just soft as well behind. We're on, we're on blackjack at the moment. It's very squirrely. We're under the headlands of North Head and Can I Point leading into Manly. Yep. So we're, we're on the tracker now and uh, for me, uh, Wild Oats opened a bit of games on Blackjack. Blackjack got the big header and uh, Wild Oats was able to stay up. So this is not a done deal yet. And Blackjack is definitely not on lay. Just headed and again. At the moment, yeah, and headed again. And Wild Oats is getting the inside run here. So this could be yep. back advantage to uh, Wild Oats 11. Indeed. She'll be back on starboard tack. Yep. And she, uh, you know, Blackjack yep. really suffered there. She, Hit a couple of soft patches, had to put the bow down, and Wild Oats really didn't um, get affected as badly as Blackjack. And here we are on, uh, there's North Head there in the uh, background. Just coming round now, you'll see Blackjack in a moment. About to come into picture, steaming in towards Manly. That's the... Yeah, Wild Oats just headed a little here. I yeah, think he's gonna get across no, Blackjack will be ahead, I think. Yeah. She's set up on the lay for the... She dials uh, up at him right here. No, I don't think she's They're close cool enough. Have they, Blackjack? Yep. Yeah, just. She's, a, she's about 100 metres from the weather mark, Blackjack, laying in on Port Tack. She will cross Wild Oats. Wild Oats will have to follow her in. And she'll lead round here by about... He's only just. 15 seconds. Oh, they're calling her. The calling for it. 
No. No, oh. Blackjack's across. That's just a try on. Easily across. Yeah, she's across by a good boat length and a half. Okay, code zero starting to go up. The uh, false four stay on uh, Wild Oats. <coughs> and she will... And it's not a... Uh, I don't know if that's a masthead. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. We'll get so a time here, Warwick. 19, 19, okay. Here. There goes uh, Blackjack. She is around the Can I Point mark and on her way down towards Shark Island. She hasn't got a... Uh, Neither boat going for masthead zeros. They're both... They're looking anxiously above on Wild Oats at the masthead. They're bearing away now. And what's the time? Yeah, I think up? that was 13, no. Pete. I, I'm still so on the about start, 15 but seconds. But they're, they're late. Oats is late with their code zero. And so is Blackjack. Blackjack hasn't got it locked off yet. It's still flopping around on the force day. They've got to be tight. Now, there's a problem on Wild Oats. They're lowering the code zero. Up it goes again. Both of them. And there goes, uh, there goes Blackjack's code zero. Fractional. They're away. Wild Oats is not set yet. They look to have a problem. The crew are looking aloft. I know it is a masthead code zero on uh, Blackjack. And we're just awaiting the arrival of Bo Jest at the weather mark. Something is amiss on Wild Oats. It's a very yeah. poor set. Meanwhile, Blackjack is storming down the harbour towards the Shark Island turning mark. And we're just in the screen now. In a moment will come Bo Jest, who's done a pretty fair job you can see the bowmen ready to go with their code zero. Around she goes. She's about a minute and a half behind the leaders and about another two or three minutes to Wild Oats 10. There goes Bo Jess. She teased. Code zero going up. And still Wild Oats, I don't think it's got her code zero up. There's obviously a serious problem. Be a few raised voices, I would think. The, the one thing I would comment on there, Pete, was that Blackjack had their... Uh the tack of their code zero out a lot earlier and set up than what the Oats guys did and a beautiful set on Bo Jest. Yeah. Slightly different shoot. They're actually running an asymmetrical shoot as opposed to um, a code zero. So we're just running down. That's Bo Jest, white spinnaker, right of screen. Mid screen is uh, Blackjack, the clear leader and still without a for sale other than the jib is Wild Oats left of screen heading up in towards Lady Bay. She's just trying to keep the speed on until they can put the bow down with some sort of spinnaker or asymmetrical sail. If he gets we'll, any higher he'll want to we'll go up there and, uh, I think. get a closer look at that. Bow jets might take them along at this pace to overtake Wild Oats 11 but we'll see if we can get a, a closer view of what's going on on the foredeck of uh, Wild Oats 11. A lot of spectator boats. We're in a lot of wash ourselves aboard the mighty camera cat. The media crew boy, Aero Media crew boys doing a great job on the technical side. John O'Witty and the boys at the back of the bus here. And, and I tell you what, the reason that they've not gone for their mastheads is there's so much east in it that uh, having to go to Shark Island, I just saw Blackjack fully pressed. Yep, she is fully pressed. It's rock and roll out here, let me tell you. If I'm going down the other side. If Wild Oats has stayed up there, she's just breaking she's out now. now yeah. Just deploying the uh, big white Wild Oats wines. Is it fractional, Warwick? Or I think it is fractional, is it? Or is it well, master? No, it looks like uh, they got, no, so I think they've had light. a problem with their fractional and, and uh, had to reset. Just guessing. But they're fully wicked. Option. Black, Blackjack is fully wicked up. She's a beam of Camp Cove. Yeah. Bo just hanging in too. So Wild Oats 11 hangs on to second, but has lost obviously an enormous amount of ground lot to uh, blackjack yeah blackjack smoking she's going to the east of the sound pigs reef wild oats has got plenty on off camp cove fully wicked up the crew just getting that genoa down off the foredeck
actually, Pete, I think we might have got that wrong. As we get closer to Blackjack, we were sort of back body for Bo Jest. I think they have got their mast head on, not a fractional. Yeah, yeah, I think we called that earlier that we... They'll be doing, you know, 20, 18, 20 knots down the harbour. A wonderful sight either from the harbour or from the foreshore to see these really four magnificent speed machines smoking down the harbour in this east northeasterly breeze. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry. But just apologies. Toughing it a bit out, toughing it out a bit here on the camera cat. We've, we haven't got a full tilt on our motors, and we're it's like a washing machine, and we're whoa, going down these waves. Can we get it? Captain Warwick's doing a great job as we're approaching um, sound pigs. And uh, leading the fleet quite clearly now is, is Black Jack, Peter Harburg's charge. As we approach Sound Pigs ourselves. And uh, Wild Oats 11 is just off the Eastern Channel pylon at Watson's Bay. And Wild Oats has um, got things settled down, a little bit shaky there at the rounding. However, she's a couple of hundred metres behind Black Jack. It will be hard, all things being equal, to get back from here, you would think. Remember, they're approaching, they've got to go right round Shark Island, and then back up towards Manly again. Well, could, could get a little tricky there once they get past Nielsen with this much east in it. You know, you, you can hit a lull, so the, the, there could be a little bit of a catch-up lane, or he might open out. The voice of John Winnie, who's had hundreds of years' experience under Nielsen Park in the 18-footers. It's always different, always tricky. Yeah, you can get a lull, you can get squalls coming over the top. And going down Shark Island makes things very, very interesting at times. John said a bit more east in the breeze. Well, make the lee a bit of more of a factor yeah. and at the moment wild oats has wicked up and uh, she's slightly lower yeah. with the white spinnaker than uh, blackjack who's a little bit slower in off closer to nielsen park you can see wild oats has done a good job here john she's stayed lower yeah and yeah, he's Black. running through. The other guys are well eased to get a bit of a lull if he can carry the breeze through. It's uh, it, it is a lottery through there, really. You know. But it's a big, big deficit. It can, uh, can make made up. can make you look very good if you if you're lucky enough to get it right. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, blackjack is as opposed to wild oats. Yeah, well, wild oats got a bit of a uh, good puff out he's of Watson's a little Bay. Wild Oats a little bit for a couple of boat lengths further to Leward. Yeah, and she's made up some really good ground yeah. here. Really good ground. Which steady was. You can see that she's still arced up with the white spinnaker. Good heel, good pressure. Yeah, got good pressure, you'll run it right up to them and, here. And Blackjack has stayed yeah. only 50 metres higher off the Nielsen Park steel point shore, and she's struggled for pressure this last four or 500 metres. She's yeah. just starting to wick up now. But a good gain to Wild Oats, big you, gain. You can get all of that and be up high and get one that, that'll head him and, he, and he'll struggle to stay up and the other blokes can come behind with one that'll lift them too. So We've still got a race on our hands, I think. We have now. Wild Oats really hasn't stopped there. Well, Blackjack did. Blackjack's just starting to get rumbling again. Now it'll get tricky. And 
while as continues to come at Blackjack. Blackjack's still high. Yeah, he's uh, and he just bought this breeze down beautifully. Yeah, Wild yeah. Oats. Blackjack still upright, still lacking pressure. Wild Oats will come right up his exhaust pipe yeah. here. And still, Blackjack almost, almost, not but calm, but he's really run out of breeze. Wild Oats yeah. is doing two to his one. Yeah. Well, he's, he's now up on his hip, so if he strikes the light patch, he might really die starting it a bit soft there but gone ahead a bit you can see blackjack yeah. sheeted in his yeah. code zero but so game on for sure wild oats has hit, pulled back a huge deficit it's been now only about 50 meters behind blackjack and this is where it'll get tricky blackjack's got the puff now he's just hoisting his jib and wild oats has run out of a bit of a pre pressure yeah. Uh, he, could, he could sit there and lose everything he's gained and more, or he might might be one coming out of the hermitage there that'll uh, just get him there. He, he hasn't stopped anywhere near to the extent that Blackjack did, though. No. Very tricky, very light now. They're about three or 400 metres from the orange turning mark at Shark Island. We're on Wild Oats there. His spinnaker's yeah, started to head him a little yeah. there. Blackjack's a bit lower now. He's got the grunt. He's got the pressure. So remember, this is the bottom mark for the first time. J1 goes up. Blackjack starting their furl, getting ready to go around Shark Island and head back upwind again. And, and Wild Oats, meanwhile, has run out of pressure again. <coughs> yeah, he's getting a little one there now to get away with. Good gust here on, on Blackjack. He's above the mark. He's still got to get down. It'll be a gain to... Oh, Wild Oats is a lot higher than him, though, yeah, but John, I think. So yeah, but a hell of a gain on what, what they'd lost. Correct. Yeah. yeah. He'd probably carry the shoot okay, in a little we'll longer. A, we'll get a delta at the mark, Warwick. And OK, there's Wild Oats stormy in. Blackjack has got his Code Zero down and has jibe. And it'll, always, it'll get tricky around the back of the island yeah. as well. They're around. They're just tidying up the gear. And here comes Wild Oats. You had to stand up pretty high there, John. Yeah, call that around there. Little one, little one coming out here on the left. Might they might just get him out of jail. That was amazing, wasn't it? That Oates got right yeah. back on the tail of uh, Blackjack yeah, and, and then, then gave it all away. I, I think Oates is going to jibe his shoot here. Yeah. Looking behind as you're yeah. jibing, they're going to jibe it and yeah, carry it for a little bit. That's uh, Blackjack going around the lee of Shark Island. You can see Wild Oates has jibed the shoot. Still in not much pressure. Just died on him there, and yeah. Blackjack's got back out to where he was as a lead. Just can't get the pressure here, Wild Oats. Very so, tricky. Yeah, so you look at. God, that was disastrous for Wild Oats, and that last little bit. Yeah. He got let down by the breeze. Meanwhile, Blackjack is around, almost around Shark Island, through the lee, and back on the wind, back to Manly. Here comes Wild Oats. He's round the mark now, so. That delta would be, what, out to a minute or so, Warwick, would it, I guess? Yeah, that's a uh, minute then. Yeah. Okay, so Wild Oats is going to carry this uh, round the back of the island before he furls. There goes the furl now. We're right on Wild Oats. You see the front sail starting to furl up. There it goes. They've got to get that nice and tight furl so they can reset on the next time. She's got plenty of pressure there. It's a big manoeuvre, this, to get this furl down. Bo's just very close behind. He's done exceptionally well down yeah, there. He's next have. round. She's only about another minute behind. And that, that furl on Wild Oats is not doing all that well at the moment. It's not. They've got to get it furled or otherwise they won't be able to use it and it'll be hard to get down. There was a bit of a gamble there by Wild Oats, but she's got the furl under control now as we're uh, still at Shark Island at the turning mark. And there's Bo Jess. Not nice, much pressure. Nice drop on, ooh, I was going to say nice drop on Bojess, but, yep. yeah, no, they're sorting it there. So, you know, geez, he, they're he, hanging in really he, well, Bojess. He fired the tack, so this was a, not a furling drop. Yeah. So she's around. You can see the lured dagger board there is, uh, is up. And the news is that Blackjack is well ahead. Wild Oats is just going round 
the top end of Shark Island, just lowering the furl sail. Then comes Bow Jest, another minute behind, and then probably got a couple of minutes to the smaller Wild Oats. Wild Oats 10. She's only a 66 footer, and of course, much smaller than the. Uh, Certainly the two maxis. She's going to pick a lot up if she's come down from right, right down low and she's going to get Breeze all the way in and jive right on this mark. She's probably yeah. done the best job of all down here. Or the Coming through here, yeah. To it. yeah. And that's... Uh, so we'll have Wild Oats 10 coming into view. There, there she is. is, yep. Skipper by Troy Tyndall, the um, son-in-law of Sandy Oatley. John Winning's son, John Winning, is aboard. Lots of 18-foot... Uh, yeah, Sammy Jarvin, a multiple 18-foot yeah. champion aboard as well. A lot of young guys. Tommy Spithill, brother of James Spithill, America's Cup stars on board. Young, really young guys. Ed Powies, son of uh, Dave Powies, is on board. Famous Australian yachtsman, made his fame overseas. And she's just about to approach the Shark Island orange mark you'll see just to the right of her now she is um, jibing inside jibe so she will set the spinnaker to run round the back of the island furl and then go back on the wind okay. Meanwhile, we've got the uh, back on the leaders, Blackjack, Port Tack, standing into Steel Point, Nielsen Park, a clear lead over Wild Oats, standing out midstream on starboard. Depressed, hard to see Blackjack losing from here without a you know, major upset of some description. Yeah. It's never over till it's over. The thing with these big boats, John, is that they they are very hard to sail. You really need good guys, and all these boats have got good guys. And just one little mistake can add to end up in a catastrophe if something does not furl properly or something goes amiss. So you would say correctly that all the cards are in. Blackjack's hand at the moment because she's a, got a lovely cover on Wild Oats 11. They're standing up in towards George's head. The breeze probably back more in the, the nor'east at the moment, I think, isn't it? Yeah, don't seem to have quite as much east as they had the last time up. Good pressure, 12, 14 knots perhaps. Beautiful sailing conditions. Cloudless summer sky on Sydney yeah. Harbour. Sydney Harbour at its best, unbelievable. Just don't get enough nor'easters these days. <laughs> so they're about a third of the way up the beak towards Canai Point Manly Way. They'll round that again and run back down towards the start area and then back to the finish in uh, Farm <laughs> Cove, Sydney Opera House. Just on Blackjack, she's a beam of Clifton Gardens, Chowder Bay. And, and then in the background we've got InfoTrack. She was last year's loyal that won the Sydney Hobart on line honours and, and broke the course record. She's been renamed this year InfoTrack. She's out just observing, I would think. She's not obviously in this race. But again, if it's a hard running Hobart or a hard reaching Hobart, she will be up amongst these leaders. She's another 100 foot maxi, and last year she smashed the course record by some three hours. Very good crew aboard her this year, headed by Michael Coxon. Well, we're back on uh, Blackjack and Wild Oats. I think if the, the conditions suit uh, InfoTrack this year, they'll suit Comanche. Yeah, that's Correct. a good point. Correct. Comanche, of course, one line on us two years ago in the hands of Neville Crichton this year, but most of the original crew on board, and she is some weapon downhill and across the wind. But it's a long way to go to Hobart, and the old story, finish first, first you must finish. 
and last year of course we lost um, wild oats out of the race but we're on here blackjack the race leader in this solace big boat challenge for 2017 <laughs> conducted by the sydney by the sydney club the cruising yacht club of australia and blackjack just off uh, george's head in the western channel of sydney harbour but my recollection of these two boats was it four or five years ago when it was alpha and wild oats that didn't seem to be it seems to be a greater differential in the speed today than what i remember before they were really neck and neck and the meat blackjack just seems to have the upper hand uh, plenty of water there yeah blackjack just tacking now onto port she'll lay a water across towards sound pigs wild oats has tacked also fair way back now i think it blackjack's extended we'll get a close-up shot here of uh of blackjack you can see the man standing to leeward there with his hand on the rail that's brad butterworth a champion new zealand yachtsman multiple america's cup winner he'd be calling the tactics there's brad just looking under the boom he'd be very very happy of what he's seeing on the leeward trim there simon daubney daubney from new zealand another multiple america's cup winner he and brad have sailed together a, a lot of years a lot of times and she's standing in towards Watson's Bay really you'll see the Eastern Channel pile in the background and it looks as though they're just keeping a, a nice cover on on Wild Oats 11 bow just back a little bit now but that's uh, that's the race leader Blackjack and where is she going to go with the relation to the sound picks yeah, the other guys might hope no, she's going to come no, she's going to tack stay this side they did last time they stayed this side of the pigs and they laid up so Well, that might go for a, a boulder and see if they can. Well, I think they've got to do out, something now. Out out they really yeah, they, so they might go east of the pigs, try no. to split on them, and and uh, someone down below praying. No sense following it. Great shots there of, of blackjack. Breeze up, 12, 14 knots. I think the breeze increased more on on this second lap. Um, marginally, Wild Oats has tacked really in the wake of Blackjack. She's going to pass to the west of the Sound Pigs as well. So she didn't take the, I guess, a flyer out to the east because she probably would risk of overlaying if she had. But she's a fair way back now. I must say this is really an impressive performance by Blackjack. Sail set to perfection. Just to you know, let you know, it's slightly out of shot just behind us. Bo Jest is still hanging in there really well. They, they've sailed a really good race. Yeah. And that's the shot as we pan back now from uh, Blackjack. She's coming up towards middle head. And that is Wild Oats in the background there. Look, look to me like they'll pretty well lay through again from here. It'll be a long starboard tack. He'll just lay in. <laughs> really controlling this race now, Blackjack. and the speed of these boats incredible still a bit puffy up here john is it there's puffs coming a few little holes yeah probably an hour thing only just a second sail breeze yep yeah i don't think there's going to be anything too riveting to happen to us between now and the top mark while they suggest on their hip you know they a great shot you can see the crew all up on the weather yeah. rail and, and this a uh, little bit of a different configuration in their dagger boards peter uh blackjack has just got one dagger board in front of the mast that can rotate i think up to about 15 <laughs> degrees where the oats has got uh, 
two dagger boards, which they just kept the lured one down when they're going upwind. So. Well, that's a modification Wild Oats made. They started life with that front board like uh, Blackjack. Then when they, they modified the boat year after year and they went for the two dagger boards syndrome, Since, they, since they've been doing those modifications, they haven't really had the yardstick of what was Alpha now Blackjack to sort of, you know, when you're only getting minimal, mi sorry, minimal uh, advances or, or uh, losses, you know, it's very hard to measure it. You know, you can have all the instruments and statistics in the world, but there's no, nothing better than uh, someone to sort of sail against. Yeah two boat testing as we're just yeah. watching it she'll tack now she was getting headed across middle head there so she's yeah. just gone to consolidate I would think to yeah. take a, a short hitch across to port it won't be a long one she's um, won't be far off the ley line she'll probably go a couple of hundred meters and then then tack back here she comes she's probably where the other blacks being on the hip last time and lifting off them a little bit there and so they're just going back to engage. Just, just to make sure that same thing doesn't happen to them this time that happened last time. Yeah, and while that's might have closed, closed a little. bit, yeah, yeah, I think so. She stood up there and got a bit of height on her. Yeah. Um, Blackjack fell off the edge of the earth there a little bit. Mm. Well, that was why he just make sure that doesn't happen again, yeah. I guess. So Blackjack uh, goes back again. Right on the gas of Wild Oats. She's just coming up towards our... Uh, Camera cat, but yeah, we're just watch. bringing the drone down. Good breeze here now across the heads. And it's the soft breeze. up here with uh, Blackjack, and he's bowed down. But yeah, so is Oates. Soft and headed. But certainly closer to him here, I think, than he was at the island. Wild Oats we're watching now, got good heel, good pressure there, and to the right of screen is Blackjack. Well, they've definitely closed up, haven't they? So it's really going to be about, uh, can they get clean sets at the top here and get away? Yeah, drains now. Yeah, it looks as though, uh, might be our angle, it looks as though Wild Oats is a little bit higher than... Uh, Blackjack just might be the mode they sail the boats in. It's hard to know, but it's, it's a clear advantage to Blackjack regardless. She's just hit another brick, brick wall up there. Yeah, Blackjack, Blackjack well, well down again there now, but a lot of land influence just on this breeze here. go to a ley line, a port tack ley line. She's got about 200 metres to go. I, I doubt whether she'll have another go on back on port because she's comfortably upwind of Wild Oats 11. Pressure's up and down here. We're getting a, a fair land influence from North Head and Hanai Point. And it's very squirrely up here, this breeze. There's puffs coming over the top of the land, and that's what Blackjack's been dealing with, probably more than Wild Oats, really. She's coming out towards the ley line at the moment. We're just approaching the, the weather mark, looking back at the fleet. And we've seen Blackjack, he's set up now, he, he'll be on a tightish ley line, Wild Oats is tacked short to come in on starboard but I don't think there's any uh, fear of Wild Oats uh, getting close to Blackjack here. Blackjack's on the ley line just hoisting the masthead 
Code zero. Yeah, so they're set up nice and early. Yeah, and uh, it'll be a, a fair distance. Wild Oats has got two more tacks into the mark. Oh, I wonder if Wild Oats is going to come over and muck with him on the set because he'll be on port there on starboard on a wind. Just to, nah, no, no, I think none of, none of the silly mucking <laughs> around. <laughs> Is that what you do? It's not only foot not what racing. I, not, what, not what I do, but you just never know with these blokes if they're behind. They okay, here's Wild Oats. Uh, Blackjack, we're on Wild Oats. That's the turning marker, can I point? She'll leave this to starboard. The big run back to Shark Island, then to the finish at the Opera House. Around she goes. Warwick's on pretty, the timing. Pretty comfortable lead. Yeah, lovely lead. They're nice and tight, the four stay. She'll unfurl as soon as they get. We'll get that lured runner off, boys. Okay, here we go. Bow down. Mainsail off. Ready to deploy. Here it goes, on its way, yeah. not much quicker than last time. She will smoke down the harbour. She's a good uh, 40 seconds, I would think. He goes wild out, she's just trying to get this up to the masthead, they lock it off at the top, then they wind the tack down at the bow sprit to make sure it's tight. It's gotta be tight, super tight before they can unfurl, or otherwise they'll be absolutely chicken winged up. Here goes Wild Oats, starting to unfurl a bit lower. I think that'll be okay. Here she goes, she's around. We get a delta there, Warwick. What's it, about 40, about 47. 40 seconds? Yep, here she goes. Yeah. Calling the deploy. There yeah, it goes. Yeah, she should, she should be online. okay, that'll be fine. Still not a great deal in this. Blackjack's had to head up for pressure. I think a little more north in it than last time, so they probably won't need to stay as high. Yeah, I agree, John. It's like they're, they're very more bow up. They're heading for uh, south head. We still haven't got a full, hasn't unrolled properly, full unfurl on Wild Oats. There's, they've got a, they're easing. There it goes. Down there it and goes. back up again. I think that's what they did, or ease the tack up just to un yeah, take she, the pressure. It's unrolled. Yep. Okay, this will be interesting. She's a lot lower than Blackjack. So game yeah. on here, still game yeah. on. Yeah, so maybe Blackjack oh. came around and some bit lighter lift. If he's there. up there, he won't want to run down that, uh, you know, Camp Cove shore there either. Like, although they right. just get a nice little header there at yeah. the present. Wouldn't put the glasses away yet. So that's Wild Oats, white spinning up. Code zero. Blackjack right off South Reef now. Hornby light in the background. She's got really good pressure. Yeah, he's getting some depth now, Blackjack. So you'd imagine that uh, Blackjack will be setting up for the drive pretty soon. He might get enough east out of Watson's Bay to get him away. Okay. He's getting a little header there, but um, it'll be interesting okay. to see what sail configuration but they carry to the finish, yeah. whether it'll be just a, a main and jib reach or... <coughs> so uh, you can see Blackjack is setting another sail under, under the... under the code zero. Wild Oats has had him to heat up a bit as well. She'd run out a bit of pressure. Coming into that island, you know, they, we saw the Wild Oats 10 probably had the best approach. And that's always risky when there's a lot of east, but with a little bit of north, a little more north in it now, you probably can afford to stay a little lower and come in, come in hot. But, uh, it certainly shifts around down there, you know, you can have all... You, you make all your plans, if the wind doesn't do what you hope it'll do, it. you can be in strife. Okay, well that's Wild Oats foreground, Wild Oats 11, Blackjack in the distance as they chase down the harbour. Blackjack, a beam of Camp Cove, good east-northeasterly pressure. Just looking at it here, I reckon Wild Oats has closed on them a little. Yep. Blackjack, Blackjack's in really good pressure at the yeah. moment. But That'll, he's still above his mark at yeah. that. And Oates is just that little bit lower. Yeah, but Blackjack has but to But Oates is going to have to keep it hot to get round the pigs here, so he's only just going to clear the pigs. 
So they have deployed that uh, staysail on blackjack. We can't see what's going on uh, with those. Looks like quite different shoots to me, Peter, between the two boats. Yeah. I, I, just like Blackjack, she's just to the weather of Sound Pigs now, eastern side, off uh, Lang Point, Watson's Bay area. And she should get good easterly or east or easterly pressure out of Watson's Bay, coming over the gap and powering out. And you're dead right, Woody, that they just kept on going there and getting a little bit of beast out of Watson's Bay now and really, really powered up. Yeah, no, she's lit up now. But that, that distance between them is a lot less than it was at the top mark. And Oates is still that fraction lower. They've got half an hour there. Now they're eased up on Blackjack. Yes, I think we've still got a bit of a boat race on our hands. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, Oates is definitely closer. No doubt about it. Yeah. Blackjack gone soft again. Yeah, there's, there's is definitely a, like a big a big headsail and Oates has got some shoulders in it that shoots. So yeah. They've got more more grunt. Yeah, yeah so uh, yeah, no, they, they're coming at them big time. Definitely uh, blackjack real soft at the moment yeah. and the oats in good pressure. So we're going to uh, Shark Island now for the final time and then the uh, last leg from Shark Island to the finish just near Fort Denison. Look to me if uh, blackjack, I reckon they'd love to be sailing five to green, 10 degrees hotter. Yeah. Yeah, sure. they just can't. They do, they get right up under Nielsen Park Steel Point. And that could be quite catastrophic. Catastrophic. Well, the chase is on. Wild Oats, 11, yeah. chasing hard. Blackjack, not over. The key will be really from now to Shark Island, under Nielsen Park, Steel Point, and then... I think he's happy with that was. That run into Shark Island will be very tricky and could hold the key. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look, at, look at this. Oates is uh, coming right into Blackjack now. Oates is not comfortable with that sail at this angle. And, uh, Oates is taking on the charge. But up the stage, a little bit hotter than Blackjack. Well, you'd say Ian Murray and the boys have a fair idea what to do from here on in. Yeah. They've got plenty of um, Sydney Harbour experience. You won't want to come much... Uh, much closer to be on his gas. Yeah. This is very exciting now. Wild Oats has rumbled right down to him. But I, I suspect if they carry, try to carry these chutes down the harbour, that maybe the uh, blackjack one might be a little more suitable for the run to the finish. Yeah, I don't assume that they will carry them. I think blackjack sail will be more efficient if they can carry them but it'll be pretty tight they generate so much apparent wind and wind speed that uh, what is norm for normal yachts is, is not the norm for these boats because of the apparent wind they do generate at the speed that they are going the wild oats have just slowed down a bit now uh, blackjack's got another puff around steel point There's Wild Oats putting a bow down again to try and get low. Yeah, Blackjack got a nice one there, but yeah, it's risky getting up high there. As we sure saw, is. Wild Oats did the last time he, he heated and heated. In the end, he lost a, lost a heap of everything he gained. They're starting to drive off now. Yeah, 
if this holds the key the next three or four hundred meters into this jive mark this could really determine the race blackjack in front he can maintain the pressure you'd have to say it's with him but wild oats is completely wicked up behind him you can see the heel the angular heel blackjack's running hell of a lot lower than he wants to and wild oats is just storming up on blackjack yeah. wild oats is just bow down blackjack is struggling for pressure and they're about 200 meters from this jive mark and the breeze is quite light here just a few little puffs between blackjack and the mark wild oats is slow again blackjack just hanging in there a few little puffs coming nothing of great magnitude They've closed right up. There's only 50 metres between these boats now. Blackjack just got another puff. There'll be some anxious boys on Blackjack. Good breeze at the mark, though. Good easterly pressure here, which could save Blackjack. Wild O's are just losing a spinnaker. That means probably a heading gust. She can't quite put the bow down yet, Wild Oats. To get, she's got to get up to this mark. Oh, it's close. It is really close. See Wild Oats, she's storming up. Blackjack will get to the mark first. Looks as though they will be jibing. There she, Wild Oats is right on and out. 30, 40 metres in it. Jibe here and then run to the finish at Farm Cove or the Opera House. Blackjack in a really good gust at the mark. Waldo's hasn't quite, there goes the jibe. There she goes, it'll be, they furl slightly. Outside jibe, the sheet goes round the front of the boat. Unfurl now, good uh, jibe. Oates has got an absolute bullet has, on the mark. Oates has got plenty. There's Blackjack, she's round. Now, which is the most efficient sail to the finish? Wild Oates is round, there's the jibe. Not tidy, not tidy. She, uh, and get a wrap there. No, it looks all right. Round. It's going to come out. You can see that keel out, canting. Game on here. Game on. Okay. So I, I think uh, Black Jack's got the shoot they'll be able to hang on to for the longest. But it could get a little bit bit ordinary up around uh, the finish there. So it might, might lighten right off. Massive spectator boats now pacing towards the thrilling finish. It's still on here. Blackjack still hasn't got quite settled down. The front of that Code Zero is still not full. She needs to put the bow down, but she's struggling to get around. She's got to get around Garden Island. That's the key. Comes Wild Oats, fully wicked up to leeward slightly. Uh, they're not being able to stay as quite as high as... Uh, She's got another sail ready to unfurl on the set, Wild Oats. She just lacked a bit of pressure. Blackjack still in control, slightly to windward. John said if Wild Oats can hang in here and up the end it'll get a bit square of the breeze yeah, and a bit lighter. They're furled ahead yep, and they're ahead to another code. Yeah. Okay, so that Wild Oats is furling. Got to be tidy, boys. Come on. Meanwhile, Blackjack storming away. They're, they're 20 knots plus here. There's the furl on Wild Oats. It's a big furl. It's a big sail to get furled up. Doesn't seem to be furling at the bottom at all. Oh, it's starting to now. There she goes. Probably cost her a boat length or two in that manoeuvre. Just a sea of white water out here as all the spectator craft, as you can see, following these two giants in to the finish. Meanwhile, back in the pack, we've got... Uh, 
Bo Jess just approaching the Shark Island jibe mark. And Wild Oats 10 in uh, Mid Harbour, out off the Western Channel. Pile light coming into Shark Island, uh, to Shark Island jibe mark. But at the moment, it is all blackjack, but it is not over yet. Wild Oats going high. She's left a sail, furl sail up. Maybe they're going to deploy a bit further up, which could be a winning manoeuvre here. Well, the thing is, Pete, if you look at it, that the uh, code zero on Oates is off the bow, where the one on Blackjack is off the end of the bow spread. So it's a smaller sail on, on uh, Wild Oats 11 at the moment. Whether she's going up to, for height and then will unfurl back to her old sail, yeah. that's the key here now. We're about uh, four or five minutes from the finishing line. They're halfway between Bradley's Head and Garden Island. Still as Blackjack. Wild Oats going for height. Oh, from 14 as a nine, it'll probably be a little soupy, I would think. Great shots there. Wild Oats foreground, Blackjack to Leward. You need a fairly fast powerboat to be able to keep up here. Have a look at them. Unbelievable. This is a great finish. This is one of the closest big boat, solace big boat races ever. Less than a minute in it, probably only 30 seconds at most. Blackjack at the moment, probably two or three minutes from the finish. Can she hang on and hold Wild Oats 11 out? At the moment, she's gone a bit soft and heading. It will get softer up here. And there's Wild Oats, she's unfurling, she's deploying. This could be the manoeuvre that wins them the race. Blackjack does not have that liberty. She's had to stick with this sail to the finish. You can see the committee boat halfway between Garden Island and the Opera House. Blackjack will need the pressure. She'll need this to stay fresh, otherwise Wild Oats will gobble her up. But at the moment... It'd be hard to see him running that amount of time. Yeah, out. I reckon so, it's yeah. about... Only about 20 seconds, I think. Yeah, but you'd, you'd think Wild Oats will struggle now. We're right off Garden Island, and the finishing line is probably uh, 400 metres ahead, and Wild Oats is, is, is struggling for pressure. She went up fairly high, she deployed, but she hasn't got the pressure to get down and utilise that spinnaker. So it's Blackjack at the moment, storming away, and I think you'd have to say she will be very hard to beat from here. And, uh, she will go on to be a very worthy winner after a, a really fantastic race. Wild Oats threw everything at her, but yeah. it wasn't to be. Just uh, Fort Denison now off to the starboard side of, Wild, of Blackjack. The finishing line about Hello. 200 metres away. Wild Oats is probably... 30 but seconds behind in the They are, they are high on the finish, Blackjack. They are, they might. Yeah. They, they may even have to jibe to come into this finishing line yeah. on Blackjack. I still She's don't well think there's enough it. in it, but... Uh, the right off Fort Denison, above the finishing line, as John said. Yeah, no, they're well heated there. Wild Oats is above it as well, so I think they'll both have to one and in. Here comes Blackjack now. She's bearing down. She will one more jibe. And There's the jibe. There's the jibe. Wild Oats, Wild Oats jibe is putting it in her. early. Oh, big sail to get on. Big sail to wind in. I judge that pretty nicely. They just, just flop around the finish boat. Look at that. Just fill it and round they'll go. So we'll get a delta here. It'll be about 20 to 30 seconds, I'd yeah. say. There's Blackjack now. She's just putting the bow down. She one jibe and she'll just lay down and jibe in. And we'll get a delta here. She's, we're right on the finishing line. And Blackjack. Uh, now. Now, there's the hooter. Great win to Blackjack. Some bragging rights for today, but 630 miles in two weeks' time is a different story for the Rolex Sydney Hobart race. So congratulations all round to Blackjack. Terrific victory, basically only behind once and then uh, dominated the race really from there on in.
Wild Oats, full marks to them. They threw everything at Blackjack, but it was just not to be. That first hoist, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then, Sorry. then um, they kept coming back to Blackjack. And there's Wild Oats right on the finish now. And the delta is... 43 seconds. 43 seconds. So. Here comes uh, Bo's just come peering over the top of uh, yep. Garden Island there. So, what's that, about three minutes? They've hung in pretty well, I think. Yeah, they've done yeah. a really good job. Giving away yeah. 20 feet. Yeah. Breeze is is quite strong here around the finishing line. It's, it's it's booting in all day, and I think in a few hours' time it'll be a real classically classic Sydney sea breeze of 15 to 18 knot nor'easter. So we're just waiting now for Bo Jess to come across in third place. Blackjack, the winner by 40 odd seconds from Wild Oats 11. One of the better Solas big race big boat races we've seen in, in recent times. And they got a great crowd for it too, didn't they, Pete? Wonderful. Only uh, a small fleet, but it was a, a classy fleet, and that battle between the two big boats was extraordinary and sets the Sydney Hobart race up beautifully. Well, there'll be two other 100-foot maxis involved in Comanche and Infotrack. Just waiting now for Bo Jess to come across the line. She's a couple of minutes away. And then we'll probably um, wind the broadcast up. It's been a terrific day. Our media crew, Aero Media crew, John O'Witty and the boys, Chits, and done a terrific job at the back of the boat. Not easy on this small vehicle. They're tossed around, water everywhere, but they managed to get the pictures out for you through the, throughout the whole broadcast and bring the sound to you. Um, might look easy, but it's far from it out here. Just on Bo Jest here with a white spinnaker. She's got one more jibe to come in. And then back in the fleet will be... Uh, There'll be five minutes behind, I think, the other boat. Wild Oats 10, who will probably, probably win the race on handicap, which will be a nice touch because um, it's not always the bigger boat that... Uh, Often it's the bigger boat that gets the glory, but really the, the winner on handicap is the, the boat that uh, is the winner on the day. So It's well, amazing, that, isn't it? You know, like, Bo Jess is a big, fast, powerful boat, and you look at just two laps around the harbour, and it's like there's five, five minutes in it, and um, then you sort of take that over two days. It just shows you, you know, how quick those, those 100 footers are. There's Bo Jess just jibing with Fort Denison in the background. One jibe and in, and uh, there she goes, an outside jibe. Looks all pretty neat. She'll lay in towards the committee boat, that white committee vessel, finishing boat there. Nice jibe. She'll just come in on, on port and put the bow down across the finishing line and jibe. Yeah, you've done you've a good job. I reckon they're clothed that I would thought they would have been, because they've sailed very well. A couple of tighter reaches, she might have been even closer. And she's just racing down now. She'll just bow down and jibing, and she was only you know, four or five minutes behind the uh, the two maxis, Blackjack and uh, Wild Oats 11. So um, that's it, really, from Sydney Harbour. A beautiful day, a Sydney summer day at its very best, sparkling nor'easter. So the Solos Big Boat Challenge for 2017 is all over. Victory to Peter Harburg and the boys are gone aboard Blackjack. Congratulations to them. 40-odd seconds ahead of Wild Oats 11, Mark Richards and his team, and Bo Jest in third. So on behalf of Warwick Rookland and John Winning and the, all the tech guys, we say farewell from Sydney Harbour.